This is a video of Windows 7 Media Center and uh, I keep on seeing lots of videos on YouTube which are really technically based and they're, they're pretty much made for, for the geek end of the spectrum and I don't really explain like the basics of what a media center is and how it basically works and what the features are. What, what makes it cool? Why would you want one for your home? So this little video just goes through some of the features. Um, kind of it's more for you know the basic side of things and I'm not going to go into any advanced really things just to kind of show how impressive it is and what it can do so first of all what is Media Center well it's effectively it's made up of three components firstly there's your Media Center box which is basically just a piece standard PC with the addition of a TV tuner card and uh, normally you'd buy a a media center box that looks quite nice and fits in with your like your home cinema look and feel uh, so like a silver or a black color and blends in nicely with your other entertainment gear the second component is obviously a television preferably a fat panel of some kind um, so most of them are digital now with a HDMI port so to give the best quality but you can use a media center with an older style TV if you wish you just won't get such good quality of course and the third component is the uh, is a is a speaker system or a surround sound system, which is an optional component. So that that just gives you the surround sound feature for your films and pretty much all digital TV broadcasts nowadays uh, feature programming in surround sound format. So a, a surround sound speaker system is 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 a good optional uh, thing to have, and, and increasingly a lot of people do have them now in their homes. So. The actual media center itself, well as I said it's basically a standard PC with the addition of a TV tuner card which is a card which lets you receive TV signals from the air so in other words you plug your aerial into the back of your PC into this TV tuner card and then the media center program is actually just a program which sits on top of Windows if you see here I can close this is the media center look now this nice blue screen this blue interface I can close this quite simply at the top right and I'm back to a standard Windows desktop where for example I could be surfing the web doing my Facebooking whatever I wish to do um, there's Google for example or I could install work Microsoft Office or anything else I wish on there and, and away I'll be uh, surfing away to my heart's content so what does Media Center look like? Well, you basically uh, press the green button on the, your remote control, which is, this is what it looks like. You press this button and up comes Windows Media Center. Now normally Media Center is set so it's on all the time. It, if you do restart your computer, it'll go straight back into Windows Media Center. You don't have to type anything on a keyboard. You don't type any passwords, nothing. It just goes straight into Windows Media Center. So you don't have to worry if the kids want to use it or something. You press the power button, wait for it to boot up, and it's, and it's into Media Center. So let's have a look at some of the features. Well, first of all, you've got uh, your TV section here. So you've got your TV guide. I've, uh, this is in Australia, so we've got the Australian national channels here. Uh, for example, uh, if I show, we have what's coming down here uh, at nine, the time now is 9.44 a.m. So this is what's on at the moment on all the channels in Australia. I can just simply select one of these channels and uh, let's select 7HD digital and it'll, it'll go in and this is a high definition uh, broadcast using Dolby Digital Surround Sound as well. So a lot of programs now are uh, broadcasting surround sound. What I can quite simply do is, if you see down the bottom, you can see the time. And what I can do is, of course, I can pause. Like, so this is live TV, you can pause, play again, and then uh, rewind. So we're back there again at the beginning of where I started looking at that TV show. I can go back to the guide by pressing the guide button on the remote control and then again quite simply select a different channel and switch to a different channel. Back to the main menu. We have recorded TV. So of course you can record any programs. I'll, sh I'll show you how to view recorded TV first and then I'll show you how to actually set a recording. So you go to Recorded TV, here's all of your TV programs, you can see we've got Doctor Who that was on last night, 
the amazing race, Top Gear. You just pr pretty simply, you can go in, you can see a description of what the program was, and you can press play, and away it goes. Again, you can fast forward. There we go. You can see the the bar at the bottom of the screen. Away we go. Or you can, you can press play. Or you can skip in 30 second skips by pressing the skip button. So skip in 30 second jumps. So that's recorded TV. So how do you record a program? Well, go back to the guide. And any of these programs here, there's actually a, a short a, a button on the remote control that's marked record. You just press that button and you see a little red dot appears on the right. That means it's recording that program. And you can see it says this, this, uh, this program is currently being recorded. If I press the record button a second time, the, th the, the red dot changes into three little dots you can see. That means series record. So now I'm recording every time this program is on, it is now set to record. So whenever in the future, it will always record this, this, this program, this TV series. I can right click on the remote control, go into the, op into the uh, options. Uh, I can go to, uh, oh, sorry, I mean right click and I go to series info. I can see when the next showings of this program is over the next few days. And I go, can go in here and I can, these are all the advanced settings. You can change these if you wish. You can ch choose what channel to record on, what time, when, when to delete it, uh, what time to stop recording, 10 minutes, etc. So there's also options you can play with if you want to make it a bit more advanced. If I want to stop it from recording, I just press the record button another time, and now it's not recording anymore. Very simple. So what about searching for programs on the TV guide? If I go back to the main menu again, we've got guide and search. So in here, I can do a search on title, keyword, categories, actor, and director. If I go to title, I can just type something in. So um, let's try, uh, and I'm typing this in on the remote control, on the standard remote control that I'm using for just, yeah, just, just, just using it now. It's the media center remote control. If I do, so if I search everything with TO in it, so I've got Toasted, TV, Today, Top Gear, etc, etc, etc. Quite simply, I can search through anything with TO. So you can search for whatever program you want over the next uh, week's worth of guide listings. Same you can do for categories. So if you go into, um, let's say, Music and Arts, um, and these are all the different programs that are on over the next week in Music and Arts, to do with Music and Arts. There are lots and lots and lots of categories down here. Sports, uh, whatever you want, basically. So that's the recording, searching, and uh, the live TV. So that's that's basically television stuff. So you can do all of this with TiVo now uh, and other similar products on the market. So that's kind of uh, where like TiVo and that would, would more typically kind of stop in a way. They do have some other features around the whole live TV, recorded TV thing, but the, but this is where Media Center excels. Outside the TV section, we've got so much power in what we can do. So, for example, um, pictures and videos.